Hi, it's Lipstick Owl. Thank you so much for watching today. It's more lipsticks. Oh, okay, I know, I know. There's six here. This is the last round of purchases before I start breaking things up into categories. Um, but I really am in my bougie lipstick era. I fully embrace that. I know that. I am so grateful so grateful that you take the time to watch my videos, the ads that come along with those. If you're using any of the affiliated codes in the description box, it helps to support my channel, which in turn allows me to do things like this. Because in front of me, I think I have six of the most expensive lipsticks I've purchased. I just opened these and I realized I haven't even, like three of them come in like their own little protective sleeves. Um, I do have two of these here from La Rouge Bouche. So these are refillable lipstick cases that are, one is leather and one is faux leather, like vegan leather. And um, so all of them have like a really beautiful component. And the last one I have here is a Carolina Herrera where you purchase this and then you can choose whatever cap you want to go with it. So every single one of these has like a super luxurious element to it. And the reason I'm doing this series on luxury lipsticks is the price range is anywhere from $35 to, I think the most expensive one is the Hermes, which was $75. Okay, I have a ton of super luxury lipsticks, but which ones are worth it? And if you're gonna shell out any amount of money, $35 or more, which one is worth it? for what it is you're looking for. So my goal is to try a whole bunch of things. So these are all brands here that I have never tried before. I do have other ones. Um, I will link those previous videos. I did one where I was trying on 18 luxury lipsticks, another one where I was doing six. I'll link those in the description box down below. But the truth is, I have tried some of those brands and some of those formulas before. Um, all of these here are brand new and I have them kind of split up by the reds, there's four, <laughs> and the non-reds. So let's start with the non-reds. Look, hello Byredo, you're so cute. So um, opening up this little teeny tiny pouch here, oh, isn't the component just stunning? Such a pretty component. I really feel like this is where luxury beauty shines. It's so heavy. Um, somebody mentioned in the comments that they love knowing which are the, like, the really heavy ones where if you throw it, you're gonna hurt someone. <laughs> This one, this one, uh, one's from Tom Ford, um, the Guerlain Rouge G lipsticks. Like there are some that are just amazingly, deliciously weighty. All right, so I have one of the satins. I did not want to buy at this price point more than one. It's like, okay, out of all of them, which color do you like the most? And it turned out to be the satin formula. And this one right here is the shade Amber in Furs. I have purchased so many red lipsticks, I told myself no more red, because there was a really pretty Byredo red. I was like, no, no, no. So this is um, Amber and Furs. Is there a little bit of like a metallic to this? I don't think I knew that. At the bottom, it just says satin, Amber and Furs, Rouge à Lèvres. It doesn't actually say that it's a metallic satin. Okay, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I'm gonna start with that. First of all, um, I do not have a warm and wonderful place in my heart for metallic lipsticks. It reminds me too much of the frosted lipsticks of the 80s, <sighs> along with that bright powder blue eyeshadow that I, I struggle, takes me back to what was not always a beautiful place in my makeup memory. So I, I like the color. I don't know that the formula is giving anything too luxurious. It's satin, it's nice, but I don't know that there's anything amazing about this. I'm not really smelling a scent. To me, it smells just like a lipstick, but for me, I, I don't know. I'm not as impressed as I was hoping to be right off the bat. It doesn't feel like really hydrating. And I'm not sure if it's the metallic finish to this that is really leaving my lips looking, you know, less youthful and more aligned. I'm 49, I know, I know, but let's not accentuate that. Okay, maybe what I need to do is like 
put on a really nourishing lip balm that's going to leave my lips like fully as plump as they can be before I put this on because right now out of all of the luxury lipsticks that I've tried this shade and finish might be at the bottom. Okay the next one is Sicily. I do like that this is like a little red velvet pouch. Um, you know the Byredo one has like little ties on it um, but Okay, great. So this has kind of like your zebra print in gold on there. Boy, she is thick and chunky. It's a really thick lipstick, um, but it doesn't really feel terribly luxurious. This is like a little plasticky cap here. Okay. Um, and this is one of the satin lipsticks from Sicily. This is Le Fito Rouge in Beige Manhattan. This is number 15. I do like that we're getting like, you know, a real architectural bullet. That's nice. And you know, it does say Sicily on it, but neither here nor there. But I feel like all of these little corners might really help you to carve out your lip line. Um, but I don't know how long they're going to last because once, you know, it kind of starts getting dull. But I don't know, there's enough little corners and edges to this. You might get more precision out of this longer term. All right, so let's try it on. I like this shade. This feels so much more hydrating and nourishing on the lips than the Byredo. This actually feels really nice. It's not too emollient where it's kind of slippy or greasy, but it feels very soft, very pillowy. I'm not really getting a scent out of this either. That bodes well for it. I think this was $65. It's an expensive lipstick. As I am looking at it, I do feel like my lips, um, at the end of this, they're going to be tortured because, you know, lip swatching, wiping things off, reapplying. But I really feel like this makes them feel really nice. It has a beautiful mouthfeel. It's very silky. It's very satiny. It doesn't feel heavy or sticky. The one thing I did notice as I was applying it, I felt like the bullet itself might have been a little wibbly, so I went down to look at the bottom. I don't think it's actually coming out of the component itself, but it, it had me worried. It had me worried. But I feel like it's just stunning. The feel of this. Ooh. Now, here's where I wish um, that we had a... It does have a magnetic closure. I do think that's a nice touch. But I wish that this cap for $65 was a little heavier because the Byredo is not that expensive and this metal component is, oh my goodness. Tom Ford is $59. Now it doesn't have the magnetic closure, but it does feel really heavy and weighty. This does not, and this does not give luxury the way I would expect at this price point. I do like the closure. I do like that we have this bright gold packaging with the red S on the top. And again, the touch here of having the number and the color of the lipstick on the bottom, that is super helpful when you have as many lipsticks as I do because I'll store it upside down and I'll know what it is. Now we're getting into reds. I kind of don't want to take this one off. This one feels really good. Um, I bought three reds. One of them, uh, I think we'll put this one on next, is this Carolina Herrera. This is one that I tried in a previous video, but I've only worn it once. Um, I have some initial thoughts on that. I might save that for my video when I'm actually breaking everything down. But I did want to try it on for you in case you didn't get to see the other one. This was kind of expensive. Um, this was $55 because you had to buy each part separately. And when you put it together, it's $55. <laughs> Somebody mentioned this brand in the comment section. I was like, oh, my Macy's sells it. Let me order one. I did. I picked up a matte shade, and this is the matte shade in Carolina. I feel like this applies very comfortably, but the packaging is so lightweight. So lightweight. But look at the pigment. It's pigment for days. So we're definitely getting into that area of luxury lipsticks where you buy this separately and you buy the case separately. I know Dior does that, Guerlain does that, but a lot of those other ones, I feel like this part is so much more substantial. The other thing that I think is interesting is that instead of, I would much rather they spend the money on upgrading this case, because this is feels very lightweight and plasticky, feels a little chintzy. Um, like the touch of it being red on the inside, that's nice, but 
they have like a large metal gold key ring that you can get to go through here. You have to pay for that. There are charms you can attach. You have to pay for those. There is a large magnetic tassel in multiple colors, depending on how you like, there's a lot of different things to make this one thing like extra, 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 which is kind of fun. But honestly, I would much rather have fewer accessories for my lipstick and have this be a little bit heavier, a little bit, you know, more luxurious, like maybe a magnetic closure, like something that just gives it a little bit more. Cause for $55, this right here, I feel like the packaging is lacking when it comes to the luxury aspect, but I do like this matte formula. I think it's beautiful. Um, this shade in Carolina is also like one of my new favorite reds. I think it's great. It's time for the most expensive lipstick I purchased for this. This is a satin formula from Hermes. I really wanted to get one of the limited edition shades, but the hard thing about that is once you get a limited edition shade, if I keep wearing it and you wanna know what it is and you can't get it anymore, that's frustrating. So I'm like, only get things that are in the actual lineup, but they have kind of like a limited shade range because they come out with seasonal colors all the time. I think that's really smart of them, but I kind of wish like if there was a shade and we all fell in love with it, can we just keep it? <laughs> but this is the satin formula. I do, I mean, come on. This is luxury, luxury, luxury. It's very heavy. It's nice and weighted. It does have that magnetic closure. And I got a red. This is the shade Rouge Piment. I don't speak French, but I'm doing my best. Um, but I, I like the look of it. The shape of the bullet looks very simple, very traditional. It doesn't have like all of the angles that the Sicily one did or the ones from Prada that have like the little triangle for application. Um, I kind of prefer something like this, but I, I can't wait to put it on and see what this satin formula feels like. Like for $75, knock my socks off. I'm not, I'm not sure how to feel. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's $75. Is anything worth that price? Any single item? I don't know. Okay, I'm just, I'm just sitting here <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to, to think about it. Okay, the lipstick obsessed person in me is like, because it's beautiful. Like the packaging is luxurious. I love the magnetic closure. I like the, you know, three tones, the Hermes like little stamp up here, like their logo. It's so pretty. Um, I, I like everything about this. I like the simplicity of the shape of the bullet. I like the way that it feels. It has a very similar, not heavy, but very hydrating feel like the Sicily. It, it's a beautiful lipstick formula wise. But then I ask myself, I don't care that you come in a cute little canvas container. Is it worth $75? I think that comes down to what it is you're going for. And I, I think that when we're trying to evaluate whether something is worth it, it's what are you in it for? Because you could certainly find a shade of lipstick or a formula like this that was less expensive. You know, maybe not necessarily everything that this gives at a drugstore price, but you know, red lipstick is red lipstick. Not all red lipsticks are created equal, but there are some great red lipsticks at a more affordable price point. But if you're going for the luxury experience, this is delivering, in my opinion. And I also really like the way that it feels. It feels really nice on the lips. Um, I think I probably would like it a little bit more if I used it with a lip liner. Um, I feel like the older I get, the more my lips show like that vermilion border breaking down. I'm losing collagen in my lips. And with a really pigmented shade like this, just a little bit of lip liner makes a huge difference. I wanted to put these on with outliner just so that you could really see what they look like on their own. But I'm struggling because She's $75, but it's, it's really a lovely, lovely lipstick and a great experience. We're just down to La Bouche Rouge. Now, this is a lipstick I have been looking at and looking at and looking at, and I was like, I can't spend that amount of money. <laughs> because if you were to get, this is a leather lipstick holder, the lipstick holder on its own, it's got a great magnetic closure, but it's fantastic. 
This right here is $80. And it comes in a variety of shades, black, red, white, this kind of like little camel color here, which I like. And each refill is $45. Okay, here's where I tell you, I found this little leather lipstick holder on sale for 30 at like Saks off fifth. <laughs> and um, this one here, the black one, actually got from the detox market and they had it on sale for $12. Now this is not leather, this is a vegan alternative, but they say it's also not made of plastic. And I was like, okay, what's it made of? Anyway, it's interesting. It still has the same magnetic component. It feels so similar. They both have the logo stamped on the top you know, of both cases. I think that's great. And then I also got the refills from the detox market because normally they're $45 and I got them for 31. So I didn't spend the potential $125 for this. I spent a lot less. They're still crazy expensive. Le bouche rouge means like the red mouth. Um, I don't speak French, but I know that bouche means mouth and rouge is red. <laughs> um, so basically it's, it's a company that kind of makes beautiful red lipsticks. They do have other shades. They have pinks and nudes, but they really heavily lean into reds and like that kind of stole my heart away, but I, I just couldn't bring myself to purchase one because the prices were so high. But when I did a little, you know, searching around, I was like, okay, I might be able to swing this. So I'm going to start with a satin formula. I got one satin, one matte. I didn't get one of like the sheer ones. Um, I was like, no balms right now, just one thing at a time. Um, this is the shade Lador. This is reading a little orange. This is interesting. I don't know that the color representations on La Bouche Rouge's website was very good. I'm just going to tell you the little satisfying click as the magnet pulls it together. I love that sound. I could listen to that all day. That is fantastic. Uh, the one thing you are going to want to do is you can put it on and the magnet pulls it in, but there is like a little seam up the front. And if you want it to line up, you, you can just align it. It doesn't automatically do it for you. I don't know if that matters to you, but it's something that I notice. Um, but I, I feel like this lipstick, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to keep clicking it open. <laughs> um, the packaging, very weighty, very luxe. Um, I do really like the, you know, the touch of it being embossed here on the top. Um, if you're curious, the um, refill has the name on the side right here. So if you want to get another one, if you finish yours, you can do that. This feels really comfortable on the lips. It has just a little bit more of a a thinness and a sheerness with one application than um, most of the other lipsticks I've tried on today. I feel like the one from Hermes, even though it, it could, you could probably sheer it out, had a little bit more pigment right off the bat. Um, I felt like I really needed to go over this several times to get the right amount of pigment spread out. Now, sometimes that happens when you're trying a lipstick for the first time. Um, there's kind of like that it's kind of like it's sealed over and as you're wiping it on, you know, you kind of have to warm it up and break through that top layer of wax. And once you do, then every, so I don't know if that's what I was experiencing or whether it was necessarily the formula. I don't know, but I, I like this color. This color screams summer. This color screams like orangey red and I love an orangey red lip. And I think, mm, I like this one. It seemed a little more orange on first white, but as you build it up, I feel like the red does kind of come through. It's very comfortable. Um, I, I will have to wear it and let you know how it wears, you know, throughout the day long term, but I like the formula. I don't know. I don't know that I would pay full price for the like leather holder or the vegan leather holder as well as the lipstick at full price. We'll see if I change my mind later. Um, but right now it's nice, but I, I don't know that it's that nice. Here is the matte formula from Le Bouche Rouge. This is the shade Pop Art Red. Uh, this is a matte, so it's gonna have a very different finish, but let's see what this is like. This is a much cooler red. Uh, I mean, I like both of them, but this also feels a little bit thinner on the lips. And it might be that I'm not building it up as much, but it feels more like a 
like a lightweight thin formula. This is really nice. I don't know. I think it comes down to what your preference is. If you want a lipstick that feels like you're almost not wearing lipstick, I think this is gonna be that one. I don't know how hydrating it's going to be. Um, and I know that um, these formulas are made with like special ingredients. They're a clean formula, if that means anything to you. Um, I'm, I'm here for the luxury aspect, not for the clean aspect of it. Okay, just, just so you know where I'm coming from, my whole if that means anything to you. Cause like to me, whatever, you know, make the makeup, I'll try it, I'll see if it's worth it. Um, but this feels really a little bit more lightweight than the one from Carolina Herrera, this matte here. I also feel like this is not as instantly pigmented as this one was. And I feel like it has a very different mouthfeel. This one feels more like a creamy lipstick with a lot of pigment although it is matte, and this here feels like a matte lipstick, and it doesn't have a lot of emollient or hydrating properties to it. I'm not saying that it's dry, but I'm curious whether my lips are going to feel dry by the end of the day. Now, temperatures are finally a little bit warmer where I live. We're in the high 40s, low 50s right now. Um, and in January, we were like at negative four. Who knows, winter is not over. It could swing back down to like, freezing and my lips have been a little bit like confused what are we doing what are we doing and so they've been a little bit drier a little bit flakier i feel like this actually looks good not all matte lipsticks make my lips look good i feel like this one actually doesn't accentuate too many of the lines um i don't find that it you know it made a nice crisp line on the outside edge right by the vermilion border i feel like this actually it goes on really beautifully i like that about it I'm curious to see how me and this lipstick get along because I'm initially, my initial thought is, is it gonna be hydrating enough for all day wear? Or if I put another layer on, if my lips start to feel a little dry, will I get the nourishment that I need from this matte formula? These two lipsticks here have the potential to be the most expensive because if you're paying full price for the packaging as well as the refill, this one's gonna run you $125. And I don't know how much the vegan case normally costs, but even if it's at like, you know, $30 plus 45 for the refill, that's $75 or more. Um, these are going to be the most expensive out of everything here. I don't know that I would recommend you spend that much on this unless you've already tried this brand and you love this brand because I feel like the contents, the lipstick, is good lipstick. But what we're really paying for is the experience. You know, the, the leather packaging, um, the fact that it clicks and has this nice little satisfying, you know, that, that is definitely something. I feel like if you're going to be paying $75 for a lipstick, this is a beautiful experience. But again, are any lipsticks worth that price? I think the only one for me that was the disappointment, and it's not in the packaging, it's in the shade. And I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be metallic. That's on me. I'll have to see if I can find a way to fall in love with that lipstick because my heart is sad right now. <laughs> but I think overall, this is interesting. Um, these two were the most comfortable. These are both satin formulas. I do really like the formula of the matte from Carolina Herrera. And I'm not saying I don't like these. I just feel like at the price, if you're buying them at full price, ah, wow, that's a lot. Um, and this one here, I don't know. I must not have been looking very carefully when I was checking it on the website, but there we go. I just realized I forgot to swatch all of these for you. I usually do that as I go along and today a little, a little off of it. So let's, let's talk about these. Um, this one right here is the one from Byredo. This is Amber in Furs, the satin formula. This is from Sicily. This is number 15, Beige Manhattan. Here is the matte from Carolina Herrera in the shade Carolina. This is the Hermes satin lipstick in the shade Rouge Piment. Um, this right here is the La Bouche Rouge, and this is in the shade Le Dore. And this is the matte formula from La Bouche Rouge, and this one's called Pop Art Red. 
So there are the shades. I was kind of surprised these were a little on the sheer side and this one is so like pigment loaded. Um, me and this lipstick, we're gonna, at that price, I'm gonna need to figure it out. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I don't know how I'm gonna make it work or whether I'm just gonna embrace the frosty and see if I can change my mind. There we go. This has really been an interesting process for me, you know, buying this many really expensive lipsticks. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this previously, but I started buying lipsticks like, you know, a couple at a time here, a couple at a time there in October. And I started kind of just stashing them away in like a little like acrylic bin, like don't open it, don't open it, don't open it. And then I did that first video of like 18 lipsticks um, and that one, <laughs> That was a lot of fun, but it was also a lot of lipstick. Um, so I didn't just go out and spend everything all at once. Um, and then the other ones that have come trickling in, you know, I've picked up a few here in December, a few in January, and um, the last ones finally arrived today. Today is the 1st of February when I'm filming. So when, you know, the cases for the refills came in, I was like, okay, finally, Let's get down to business. <laughs> so this is gonna be the last of the trying on new luxury lipsticks. Now don't think that just the lipsticks that are in these three videos, I'll link the other two down below, are the only ones I'm gonna be talking about. I do have a lot of other luxury lipsticks already in my collection. One's from Hourglass, one's from Gucci, one's from Lisa Eldridge, uh, Charlotte Tilbury, um, YSL. Like I'm looking through my collection here, there's quite a few that fall into that luxury price point. I was kind of wondering like, where should we kind of leave that mark? What, what, what is the price range? Like at what point do you feel like you're buying a luxury product? Because to me, NARS is high end, but to some people, NARS is luxury. And I want to know which brands are you considering luxury? Because most of the NARS products are in the low 30s, low to mid 30s. I don't think there's anything over 34, but I was thinking 35 and above for price point for like what falls into the luxury category. But I would like to know your opinion on that. Also, um, keep letting me know how you want these grouped. I think I'm kind of leaning towards grouping this series um, by formula. Let's do all the mattes. Let's do all of the satins. Um, let's do all of kind of like the sheer or the balms or the glossy situations. Um, and then I'd probably go back and do another set by color because a lot of people think I'm looking for a red lipstick. I'm looking for a nude lipstick. I'm looking for a mauve lipstick. And I think it would be helpful to go through and talk about it that way. Um, and my goal is not just to, um, tell you which ones I like best, but to describe them in a way that it'd be helpful to you. So when you go shopping, if your criteria is different than mine, that you'll know the key points. Are they scented? Do they last a long time? Do they make my lips dry out? Um, do they move outside of the vermilion border? Those sorts of things. And I think those sorts of criteria really help me decide which is like my easy go-to lipstick. The one that I know I can trust is gonna be bulletproof. And the ones where I love it and it's really fun, but someone needs their handheld. <laughs> you know, we need to babysit this lipstick a little bit. And sometimes I'm willing to do that and some days I'm not. So I think it'd be really interesting to go through and to talk about lipsticks about like that. So expect to see them grouped by formula and then later grouped by color. So we'll be mixing up formulas, but just talking about also at the price that they're at, which ones in my mind are worth it and which ones aren't. So let me know what at what price level do you think luxury lipsticks start? And I'll pull everything in my collection that is that price point and higher. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll go on from there. Thank you so much for watching today. Here's something else I wanna know. Um, one last question for you. When you're thinking about a luxury purchase, and it doesn't have to be a luxury beauty purchase, it could be um, a handbag, it could be a car, it could be a piece of cookware, like, you know, Le Creuset or something. It could be anything, you know, like maybe your phone. <laughs> what At what point um, do you feel like you're getting value for your dollar because of all the extras, the little touches that it has compared to more affordable things? Or do you feel like, okay, it does the same thing as this, this is less, uh, less expensive, but I really feel like I'm just paying for the name. I'm curious to know at what point in a luxury purchase do you feel like you're paying just to pay or whether it's worth it for you. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. 
Thank you also for being willing to watch the ads that come with my videos and use those affiliated links in the description box because when you do that, it allows me to kind of pull out all the stops and to do a series of lipstick reviews like this because it gives me that beauty budget to, you know, spend on luxurious items, on things that make me just go, ooh, and then let you know how they go. Happy to be your guinea pig, but thank you so much for the ways that you support me so I can do things like this. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.